Yeah, that's – I'm going to be totally honest. Mike has written some really good songs, written a lot of mediocre songs, and, and some songs that I think I wouldn't be a fan of the band if that was our songs. You know, yeah. The decline to me is what I hold up on a musical – like it just – musical pedestal, and to me it's a perfect song. It is fucking – I got chills right now, man. Right. Like I remember the first time I heard, I was, "What the fuck is this?" And it's just so long and so many levels and right. just so beautiful. And I'm not one to talk our shit up, but that fucking song, man, it takes you for an emotional ride. And lyrically, it is fucking genius. And music is supposed to, in my opinion, have peaks and valleys and be emotional and take you take you out of just listening to something you know and that's why listening to records when i was a kid was an escape you'd put it on and for 45 minutes you would have uh, a, a musical novel it's songs aren't made to be listened to one piece at a time like downloading because it's it doesn't paint a full picture of the artwork the decline has all of that in one song yeah it does slow parts fast parts moody parts happy parts and just lyrically it's like wow, where the fuck did you come up with this shit, you wacko? How did you guys, like, I, I know you said that he, he wrote it, but, like, the, the drums, like, how does that even come about? I learned it in two days and recorded it the next day. Yeah, what we did was we... What? Yeah. I think there's, I, I could be wrong in the number. I don't know. There's either 36 or 54 different parts to that song, something like that. So I, let's just go with 36. Yeah. I learned it as 36 different songs. Like... The first part we called the RKL part because there's a band called RKL. It was real riffy. That ding, ding, da, 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 da. And then we just labeled them all, and I, I learned the first part. And then I learned the second part. And then I'd piece them together. I learned the third part, piece all three of those together until I had the whole song start to finish. And we had it charted out, too, on a wall. Yeah. And then uh, when we recorded it, it was pre-Pro Tools. We recorded it on tape. So you could hear a little fuck-ups here and there. But... What I would do is I, I just would start, start at the beginning of the song, play as far as I could through all the parts and all that stuff. And then if I fucked up or dropped a stick, we'd stop there, back up 30 seconds and, and start playing it again from like right before the fuck up. And then they would edit the tape together. You could, you could physically edit tape together on breaks. Yeah. Edit the tape together. So... Actually, what you're hearing is a live performance of me start to finish of the song with a few edits. Dude. In two days as well? I recorded that in one day. I think one day, maybe two days, but I learned it in two days. When you guys, when that was all done, what was going through your guys' head? Well, I hadn't heard anything other than like just sitting in a room and Mike playing riffs and then me piecing the riffs together. I hadn't heard it with lyrics or anything like that, because it was just, it was still, Mike had it musically written out, but, or, you know, yeah, musically, the riffs tied together, but I hadn't heard the the lyrics or the, the melody lines or the, you know, any of that stuff. Yeah. So when I first heard it, I was like, what? Like, it just kind of blew my mind. And, and I got to give credit where credit's due. Writing a long-ass punk song like that wasn't our idea. There's this band called the Subhumans from England. Mm -hmm. They had a song called Cr Cradle to the Grave. And I think it's 14 minutes long. It's sort of the, you know, it definitely influenced us. Yeah. 